Hello and welcome back to another full step-by-step -step PC build guide and today I will show you how to build a PC in Deepcool's brand new CK560. Okay, let's take a look at the other parts I'll be using today. For the motherboard I'm going to be using ASRock's Z690 Phantom Gaming Velocita. For the CPU I'm going to be using Intel's 12th gen Alder Lake i7, the 12700K. Keeping our CPU cool I'm going to be using an air cooler from Deepcool, it's the AK620. For RAM, I've got 32GB of Kingston Fury Beast DDR5 at 5200MHz. For storage, I'm going to be using Sabrent's Rocket 4 Plus in 2TB capacity. Powering the whole build, I've got a 1000W fully modular power supply from Deepcool. It's the PQ1000M. For the graphics card, I'm going to be using the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 3080. For case fans, I've got a triple pack of Bequats Light Wings in 140mm size. And the final part for today's build is some white cable extensions from CableWod. Okay, let's get on with the build. To remove our timber glass side panel, we need to loosen the camped thumb screws at the back. We can then pull the panel backwards, tilt it down, and lift away. To remove the other side panel, again, we need to loosen the camped thumb screws at the back, and this one can simply be pulled backwards and away. Taking a look at our case's front I.O., we've got a power button, two USB Type A ports, a single Type C port, a combined headphone and microphone jack, and we've got an LED button to control the front pre-installed fans. At the top of the case we've got a magnetic dust filter which can simply be pulled away. The case's front panel is magnetically attached and it can simply be pulled away. Behind this we've got a full length nylon dust filter which can be pulled out from the top. With the dust filter removed you can see our three 120mm ARGB fans which are pre-installed in the front. If you prefer you can mount two 140mm fans at the front. At the rear of the case we've got a single 140mm non-RGB fan pre-installed, but it is possible to also fit a 120mm fan at the rear. All of the case's pre-installed fans have three pin fan connectors. We don't have any fans installed at the top, but it is possible to mount two 140 or two 120mm fans. In terms of cooling your CPU, you can fit up to a 360 or 280mm radiator at the front. It's up to a 280mm radiator at the top and up to a 140mm radiator at the rear. If we prefer to go with an air cooler, coolers up to a maximum height of 175mm are supported. The case is compatible with up to EATX motherboards. We've got 7 horizontal expansion slots and large graphics cards up to 380mm are supported. It's good to see the case comes with a GPU support bracket and if you've got a smaller graphics card it is possible to move it to this cutout here. Moving into your rear compartment, you can see the two large rubber cutouts to the right hand side of the motherboard have rubber grommets on them. Up at the top we've got our LED controller to which all our front fans are pre-installed and you're going to be able to use the button on the front of the case to cycle through the RGB effects. We've got two dedicated 2.5 inch drive mounts. At the bottom of the case we've got a hard drive tray where we can mount either two 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch drives in the drive trays. In the bottom drive tray we've got our accessory bag and instruction manual. I'll show you what it contains in a minute. Our power supply is going to go here and full sized ATX power supplies up to 160mm in length are supported. That is with the hard drive cage installed in its current position which is as far to the right as possible. There is an option to move the hard drive cage slightly further to the left to increase this clearance or you can remove it. As I'm not going to install any hard drives in this build, I'm going to go ahead and remove the hard drive cage. The drive cage is secured with a single thumb screw at the bottom. Once we've removed that, we can pull the drive cage backwards and lift it away. At the bottom of the case, we've got a dust filter over our power supply's intake. It can simply be pulled out of the back for cleaning. So because our rear fan doesn't have any RGB on it, and I do have a triple pack of light wings fans, I'm going to put two of them at the top. I will have one spur for the rear, I'm just going to change this one out. It makes sense to remove it at this stage because installing the motherboard is going to be easier without a rear fan. The fan is held on with four screws at the back. So this is everything that comes in the accessory bag. We've got our instruction manual. We've got absolutely loads of cable ties. We've got an ARGB cable if you prefer to connect the pre-installed front fans up to your motherboard and use motherboard control rather than use the case's built-in LED button to cycle through the various effects. We've got a bag of screws. I'm not going to go through these individually because there's a nice diagram in here which tells you what to use each of the screws for. We're now ready to start working the motherboard and we're going to install our CPU, our M.2 SSD, our RAM and even our CPU cooler before we put the motherboard into the case. To install our CPU we need to open the slot so we can push this lever down and out and then bring it all the way to the top and then we can open the slot cover. 
Then we can insert our CPU into the socket, line it up with the notches at the top and at the bottom, making sure the text is the same way up as I've got it. Then we can close this cover over. We're going to apply a little bit of pressure here. That's normal for the bit of black plastic to pop off. We can remove that and then we can close the lever down, pushing it onto the clip here. To install our M.2 SSD, we're going to need to remove the top heatsink. It's held on with two screws. We can then insert our drive at a slight angle into the socket and you'll notice when we flatten it down, the same screw that's going to secure our heatsink is also going to secure our drive. We're now ready to install our RAM, so we need to open the clips on the second and fourth slot along from the CPU. Then we can line the RAM up with the slot. Once we're happy, we've got everything lined up, we just need to apply some firm pressure and the RAM is going to clip into place. Same thing with our second stick. Okay, next thing for us to do is to put the bracket for our CPU killer onto our motherboard, but we've hit a slight problem. I've opened the box and there's no LGA 1700 bracket. So I do normally do my homework when I'm planning a build and I was on Deepkill's website looking at the instruction manual for this killer and they do mention an LGA 1700 bracket um, and they show that in the instruction manual. But when I looked at the box I've been given, it doesn't mention LGA 1700. So it looks like Deepkill have sent me out an older version of the killer that doesn't have the required LGA 1700 bracket. So this is disappointing. I was really looking forward to seeing how this killer would work in the particular build, but we're going to have to save it for another day. Obviously Deepkill will send you out a bracket, but that's going to take a little bit of time and I need to build this PC today. So we'll get rid of this killer and a Stark Rock Pro 4 time. We can line the backplate for our CPU color up with the holes in the back of the motherboard. Then we've got one of these standoffs to screw onto each corner. And then we've got one of these brackets to go on each side. We then need to remove the two screw covers from the top of the killer. If you're using the killer for the first time, remember to remove the plastic protection from the cold plate. We can then add some thermal paste to the CPU. Just before we lower our cooler down, we're going to add this little bracket underneath, which is going to secure the cooler to the bracket we've already fitted to the motherboard. Then we can lower our cooler down into place. Now we pass our screwdriver through the hole, pick up the screw, and then we'll secure the bracket down. Same thing at the other end. Next we can slide our second fan through the gap in the middle. Then we can pass the metal clips through the holes in the fans. And we apply a little bit of pressure to the clips, they'll lock onto the heatsink. Okay, same thing on the other side, we'll put the clips through the holes in the fan. Again we'll apply just a little bit of pressure and they'll clip onto the heatsink. I'm then going to route the two fan cables up towards the top of the motherboard. At the top we can then plug both the cables into the double splitter cable that comes with the cooler. And then plug the end of the cable into our CPU fan header at the top of the motherboard. And what we'll do, we'll just tuck the excess cables in and out of the way. We can then insert the motherboard into the case and line it up with a cutout at the back. So what I would recommend is not installing your motherboard this way round. You're better putting the case on its back and you can just set the motherboard down, particularly if you're going to use a massive air cooler like we are doing. The reason I'm doing this is you're not going to get a very good view if I have the case on its back and you get a much better view this way round. Um, we've got a middle standoff is slightly elongated. It passes through the motherboard and helps hold the motherboard in place. Without this, there'd be absolutely no way I could do this. We can now secure the motherboard to the case using the screws from the accessory bag. Okay, next thing to do is get our case cables plugged in. Our first one is our HD audio cable. It's going to go into this header down the bottom left hand side of the motherboard. So we can bring the cable through the cutout, line it up with the header with the HD audio text facing up the way and push into place. Into this header down at the bottom right hand side of the motherboard we're going to plug our front panel connectors in. So we can bring them through the cutout. Starting up with the top row into pins 3 and 4 from the left hand side we're going to plug our power switch. It doesn't matter which way this one goes round but I'm just going to plug it in with the text facing down. Okay moving to the bottom row, pins 1 and 2 are for HD positive and HD negative. So we're going to have to plug this in with the text facing down. All of our case fans have been connected up to a triple splitter cable. So we've got one 3 pin connector to plug into the system fan header here. Now it doesn't matter that this is a 3 pin cable. 
and we've got four pins on the header because there's a little bit of black plastic here which is going to make sure you plug it into the right three pins. So we can line it up and push into place. Just above that we've got our USB-C connector so we'll bring the cable through, line it up with the header and push into place. Next header up is for a USB 3.0 cable so we'll line the cable up and push into place and then again bring the excess cable through to the back. We've only got one more case cable to plug in at the back and it's this SATA power connector. So it's going to power our LED controller at the top of the case. We've got a yellow warning notice on it which is telling us to unplug this connector if we're going to use the motherboard for lighting control. And this is because we've got two options to control the lighting on our pre-installed front fans. By default all these fans are connected up into this controller and we're going to be able to use the LED button on the top of the case to cycle through the effects and to install that all we need to do is plug this into a SATA cable coming from our power supply. The other option that we have is to use the cable that came in the accessory bag that's going to let us connect all the cables up to an ARGB header on our motherboard and use our motherboard to control the lighting. So it really depends which you prefer. I do know from another user's review of this case that actually there's no static effects on the built-in case controller. Um, it's just a range of dynamic effects and I am looking for a static white. So I'm going to use this cable for this particular build. What I will do, I'm planning to do a case review and I will show you all the ARGB effects that come with the case in the review. So what I'm going to do is follow the cable coming from the left hand side of the controller and that's it there, we're going to unplug it. So we're going to ignore this end that goes into the controller, it's this other end which is connected up to all our fans that we're interested in. All we're going to do is plug this into the cable that came in the accessory bag. And then on the end of this we've got a standard 3 pin 5 volt ARGB connector. We've also got an alternative ARGB connector depending on the type of motherboard that you have. But this is the one we're going to need and it's just going to plug into one of the ARGB headers on our motherboard. Okay so down at the bottom of the motherboard two pins along for the HD audio cable that we've already plugged in. We've got an ARGB connector. Be careful, the cable one pin along for the HD audio connector is not an ARGB connector. It looks like one, but it's not. This is our power supply. It is a fully modular power supply because it comes without any of the cables plugged in and you're really going to need to plug the cables in that you're going to use. So I went ahead and plugged these in. The cables that I've plugged in are a 24 pin connector. I plugged in two 8 pin EPS cables, three 8 pin PCIe cables, and I've also plugged in a SATA cable. The reason for plugging the SATA cable in is I want to show you how to connect this up should you wish to use the case as LED lighting to control the front fans. So just before we put the power supply into the case, this is the power supply's intake fan. Remember we do have the cutout at the bottom of the case, so we're going to have to install it with the intake fan facing down the way. We can then secure the power supply into place using four screws from the accessory bag. So we haven't connected the RGB from our fans from the motherboard, what we would need to do is power our controller by plugging it in to the SATA cable coming from our power supply. And then that would power the controller and allow the button in the front of the case to operate the lights. Because we've done that, we don't need to plug this in. I'm also going to plug in our cable extension, so we'll plug in our 24 pin cable. And also our PCIe cables. I'm not planning on using cable extensions for our two 8-pin EPS cables. The reason for that is once we've installed fans at the top of the case, we're barely going to be able to see these cables. And cable extensions, the downside of using them is it's going to make cable management at the back of the case that bit more difficult. So we're going to create problems potentially for ourselves and get no benefit from it. Okay, so our EPS cables are going to go into these two headers at the top left-hand side of the motherboard. So we'll bring them through the cutout and get them plugged in. So that's those two cables plugged in and it was not easy at all with such a large air cooler in the way and limited space at the top. So if I was doing it again what I would actually do is because the cables are modular I would plug the cables into the motherboard first of all when it, before we've installed the motherboard in the case. Set the motherboard in and then you can simply just pass these cables through to the back and connect them up to the power supply which should be an awful lot easier. Whatever you do, make sure you do this before installing your fans because once your fans are in you'll have no chance at all of getting these cables plugged in. Our 24 pin cable is going to go into this header here so we'll bring it through the cutout, line it up with the header and push into place. And then we've got some cable combs on the cable to help tidy it up. Next I'm going to pass the cables for our rear case fan through to the back. Then we can secure the fan into place at the back with the included screws. Same thing with our top fans. 
Then we can secure the fans into place at the top. We can then replace the dust filter at the top. We've got three 4-pin fan connectors at the bottom of the motherboard to plug our fans into. As well as a 4-pin PWM connector coming from each of our fans, we've also got an ARGB connector. But one of the nice things with these fans is they are daisy chainable. So we take this connector off at the middle, and then if we take one of our other fans, we can line the ARGB connector up and push them into place. Then if we take the additional connector off this one, we can then plug our last fan into it. So that now means we've just got one 3-pin 5-volt ARGB connector to plug into the ARGB header at the top of our motherboard. At the top right of the motherboard we've got two ARGB connectors, so we'll plug this cable into one of them. We are ready to install our graphics cards, so we need to remove the second and third slot cover from the top. We can line the graphics card up with the slot. Once we're happy everything's lined up, we just need to apply some firm pressure to the graphics card. It's going to clip into place, and then we can secure it using the two screws we removed earlier on. Then we can loosen the thumb screws securing our GPU support bracket. I'm then going to slide the bracket round to where it's providing support to our graphics card and then lift it up. I'm going to then secure it in at the back again. We can then bring our PCIe cables through the cutout at the bottom of the case and get them plugged into the graphics card. OK, last thing to do is some cable management. We need to get all these cables organised so we can get the side panel back on again. Importantly, we do have some cable tie points and cable ties included to help with this. And we have plenty of space down at the bottom of the case for our power supply cables. So that's our build complete. I have gone ahead and set the PC up without recording the steps because I have done it previously with this motherboard, CPU and GPU combination. That was my Fractal Torrent Compact build and you'll find a link to that video in the description. So if you need to know how to install Windows, install any of the drivers and control the RGB software, you'll find everything you need in that video. What I'm planning on doing now is a full case review. In that review, I'm going to cover the thermal testing, testing the noise, which I can tell you now, the noise is incredibly good, just sitting beside the PC. Um, and because I have used a lot of the same components as I did in the Tarn Compact, I'll be able to compare the temperatures. I'm also planning on doing some testing with the case's original rear fan, so if you don't want to add any extra fans to the build, you'll get a bit more information in the case review. So you will find a link to the case review in the description. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. If you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. And I'll see you in the next video.